Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I want to talk about an amazing technology that's going to allow you to purify drinking water using only table salt. So let's check it out. All right, so this product is by a company called MSR. They're renowned for making pretty high quality outdoor camping products. And basically what it is, is it allows you to make chlorine using only salt and water and a process uh, called electrolysis. All right, so water filtration systems like the Life Straw, the Move Eclipse system that we sell at Canadian Preparedness, um, Aquamira, Frontier Pro, there's a variety of different um, water filters on the market for on the go type use. But if you have a preparedness community or if you have a large family and there's a grid down situation and the water stops flowing through the pipes or the water is sketchy because there's sewer backups and stuff like that, you're gonna want something which is capable of purifying larger volumes of water. And there's nothing better to do that than using chlorine bleach. Now, as many of you know, you can buy this thing called Pool Shock, which is calcium hypochlorite, which you can make bleach with, and that will store for long periods of time. The problem with storing bleach is that it only is going to last for six to 18 months. I believe after a year, it loses 20% of its uh, effectiveness year over year. So, you know, you can't really trust that to kill uh, parasites. Uh, especially ones that are hardier and need a pretty sizable dose of chlorine to break down the cell walls. Now, chlorine won't kill everything, but it will kill 90% of stuff. It won't kill protozoa that have hardened cell walls, uh, protozoa like cryptosporidium. This is going to be found in places where fecal matter is getting into the water supply. So as long as you're getting your water from a place where, you know, there's not a lot of movement with animals, you should be all right on the cryptosporidium end of things. But with all of these things, I mean, if you could do a double filtration method, that is great, but you're not always gonna have the time and energy to do that. That's the thing, it takes a lot of time to filter water. If you were to pair this with like a Berkey water filtration system, which is probably sufficient in and of itself to purify water. If you were gonna store large volumes of water in barrels, you would want a system like this to first purify that water maybe before you ran it through a filter. This, like I say, will be sufficient in and of itself. This is used by various communities around the world to purify their water. But, you know, to be extra safe, uh, you don't want somebody getting diarrhea or something like that in a in a crap hits the fan situation which would make it all the more crappier now a lot of people say you can just boil water and that is true however it takes a lot of energy to boil water energy that you're not going to have you're going to have to find a way to heat that water up the only way to do it for free is using a parabolic solar cooker system and that takes long and of course it requires sunlight so if you don't have sunlight then you're not going to be able to do that so this little electrolysis device is incredibly easy to use and this process is as easy as it could be a, a child could do this uh, they give you these uh, alligator clips so there's three different ways you can power it you can power it directly from a 12 volt battery so they did this intentionally because they know that you know in a crab hits a fan situation you may only have a 12 volt battery kicking around or you can power it via car charger which of course we can plug into our kodiak power generator and we don't even have to turn the kodiak on because this port is always live the output there or we can charge it by ac cord that you have to buy separately so it's very simple how it works so when i plug it in it's going to start flashing like that and so this is a salt water solution that I made previously and it's really simple um, they give you that much salt basically to start with obviously any salt is going to work a table salt preferably because it's fine granules that are going to work well in here and it's going to dissolve quickly so you put the salt up to this line here and so you don't really need a whole lot of salt and the rest is water and this can make the equivalent in chlorine but you can't make all of this at once so what we have to do we just pour this to the fill line it only makes a small amount at once so it makes about that much at once but that amount can make up to 200 gallons of purified water 
So let's just turn this on. So the process is going to start and it doesn't take long before you can actually smell the bleach. It's a credible technology. It breaks down the sodium chloride, which is salt into calcium hypochlorite. And that's bleach um, once mixed with water. Now, once you take a half a teaspoon of this and mix it with your 20 liters of H2O, that's going to produce a hypochlorous gas, which is acidic. And that's what's going to basically kill almost all bacteria, uh, harmful viruses, influenza viruses. It's not going to kill protozoa or some protozoa, I should say some it will kill, but the overwhelming majority of stuff that's going to harm you in a shit hits a fan scenario, this is going to kill. So really cool technology. Now we do sell these at CanadianPreparedness.com. Uh, they are a little expensive, which is probably to be expected when we're talking about something that can basically purify hundreds of thousands of gallons of water. Um, this goes for $250 Canadian, roughly, I believe $200 American. Uh, now, if you can find a electrolysis machine, then, you know, obviously you could, you could do that. If you don't want to go to this extent, you can just go and buy some calcium hypochlorite. Uh, that becomes toxic if improperly stored. I don't know too much about that process. I just know that there are certain health hazards with storing and handling uh, pool shock. So you got to be careful if you're going to do that. And this, of course, makes an indefinite amount of pool shock. So uh, not only if you were in a pandemic scenario and you needed to keep yourself clean, uh, purifying your bath water with filtration methods is not going to be realistic or even your shower water or something like that. But simply adding some of this stuff to that would uh, kill any viruses that could potentially harm you in there now. In the case of a pandemic, um, the virus is going to be everywhere. Unless you are in strict quarantine, you're probably going to be exposed to it. So it uh, looks like the red light is on. Let me just see. I think the red light is a sign that's something wrong. Red is supposed to indicate dead battery, but I can smell the chlorine. So now how you test if it's actually been effective and it's in the uh, the right quantity in the water tank. So they give you these test strips. And once I mix some of this in with the water, I'll scoop out a little cup of water and then I'll put one of these test strips in there. And it'll basically tell you uh, what the range, the acceptable range is for chlorine concentration in the water. I believe anything up to four milligrams is considered uh, safe for human consumption. Anything over that can be potentially toxic and uh, anything below looks like here 0.3 is not good either. So that's quite the, you know, between 0.3 millimeters and four millimeters. Now, if I was in a nasty situation, I'd probably want to come a little closer to the, uh, the safer end here, the, the more potentially toxic end, just to make sure I'm killing everything. So it gives you a color indication there and you can put that piece of paper up against here to see, you know, how dark it is. If it's too dark, that means you you put a little bit too much in, then you just have to dilute it with more water. Uh, but if it's not dark enough, that means you should probably, you know, add some more bleach to the mixture. Now they only provide you with a small amount of chlorine test strips, 10 or so. So you're going to have to buy more of these online. You can buy them from a lot of different places. I think once you were to start using this more and more, you would just intuitively know maybe by the taste of the water and just, uh, you know, getting really standardized in the process of doing it. And as long as you're using the same amount, you're using the same amount of salt every time and you know the same amount of solution to be mixed with the water then there shouldn't be any inconsistencies there uh, but of course all water is different the water source that you may be tapping it from is different and it might interact differently with the chlorine if you want one of these i'm going to post a link in the description if you want to check out the kodiak power generator uh, you can get 10 percent off using coupon code canadian proper I'll post a link in the description as well and another problem with these chlorine test strips is that they do expire 
So, you know, at some point you may not be able to test it. You're just going to have to go on faith in knowing that, you know, you've done the right recipe that's going to yield the correct results. So I think this has great potential for preparedness communities and emergency crews in particular, places where people aren't preppers. You know, this could be an emergency relief tool that they send to communities that are hit by hurricanes or, or whatever and need a quick way to purify large volumes of water. I think it's always good to have a backup system like this in your kit. Uh, like I said, calcium hypochlorite is great, but you know, if mishandled, it can become very problematic and make you sick. Because if shit ever hit the fan in a way which was prolonged, your Berkey is only going to filter so much. You know, your water filters that you use, even though they say they purify up to 100,000 gallons if you back flush them and all that, uh, they're only going to work for a certain amount of time uh, before the components start to degrade or break down. And they tend to be a lot slower. So unless you have a lot of them working at the same time uh, to provide your entire family with all of their water needs is going to be challenging to say the least. So I think that this is something that a lot of hardcore homesteader off grid type preppers might want to consider for, you know, water. Water is important. Water is like the most important next to air. And if you have your gas mask, you know, you can survive in bad air. Uh, water, generally speaking, is going to be more of a pressing issue in a long term grid down scenario. So it's it's priority number one, really, especially when you're thirsty, you start to realize real fast how important water is. We take it for granted right now. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. If you have any questions, let me know. Once again, we sell them at CanadianPreparedness.com. So uh, go pick them up there. I'm going to throw in a limited 10% off coupon code for this item, which is going to be active for, let's say, till the end of the year. All right. Hopefully that helps you out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.